Earlier today, I, I spoke with Congressman Adam Schiff from the House Intelligence on the latest developments on the Russia investigation. Congressman, what do you make of the fact that, that George Papadopoulos was actually in two meetings with the campaign, not one as the Trump administration had claimed? I mean, do you still believe he was little more than a, a coffee boy, as some of the allies of the president are, are claiming? Uh, no, I don't think that's accurate at all. But, of course, this is part of a pattern we have seen where uh, when any of these contacts are exposed, the Trump campaign tries to diminish their significance. Uh, just last week, in fact, when it was revealed that the head of Cambridge Analytica, uh, the data analytics arm of the campaign, which Jared Kushner earlier touted as being so consequential uh, in their campaign, uh, it, when it was revealed that uh, Mr. Nix had reached out to Julian Assange in an effort to try to obtain these stolen emails, uh, once again we saw the campaign downplay, well, they didn't really have much of a role, we got most of our information somewhere else. Uh, so it's part of a broad pattern. Uh, they also tried to diminish the significance, of course, of the indictment of Manafort and Gates. You would still like to, to speak to, to Manafort, to, to Gates? Absolutely. And I, and I also would hope... Is that possible, even though because of, of the charges already? Well, you know, there are the technical constraints of them being under house arrest. Uh, then there's more practical constraint that uh, it's unlikely they may be willing to testify uh, and not evoke the fifth now that they've been charged. Right. But I'm, I'm hoping that when the case is resolved, uh, that at that point, uh, as a part of any agreement, should there be one, uh, that Mr. Mueller will require their cooperation not just with him, uh, but also with Congress. I assume you'd like to talk to Papadopoulos as well. Absolutely. And he was on our witness list. Uh, he was already very much a person of interest uh, in our investigation. Uh, and, uh, and apparently he's agreed to cooperate. But whether that's agreed to cooperate only with Bob Mueller or with us, too, uh, is yet to be determined. Your committee is interviewing former aide to the president and longtime confidant Keith Schiller next Tuesday. I mean, he was, you know, sort of the president's body man for, for going back for years. What information do you hope he can provide? Are there specific topics you hope to question him on? Well, the majority apparently has been releasing our witness list. I'm not sure why, uh, because the agreement is to keep that confidential and allow the witnesses to disclose uh, if they choose to. Uh, so at this point, I don't want to confirm uh, whether he is coming before the committee. But, uh, but we do have a, a busy few weeks ahead of us. We're interviewing often multiple witnesses a day. Uh, frankly, I'm not sure that that kind of schedule is good for the investigation uh, in the sense that sometimes we're still waiting for the documents to interview these witnesses on. But there's a concerted push to bring people in fast and furious, I think, uh, in, a, in an effort to bring us to a premature conclusion. Are you saying that, that the majority on the committee are, are kind of pushing things too fast? Well, I've noticed an appreciable uptick in the pace uh, and also the unilateral actions of the committee, that is, actions taken without consultation with the minority, uh, and we've seen ample evidence of that uh, with the new investigation of Uranium One, with the subpoenas being issued by the chair, um, that I think are a response to a call that Steve Bannon made a few weeks ago uh, that the Republicans needed to bring these investigations to a halt. Uh, and turn their attention to focus uh, to uh, investigating Hillary Clinton. So I, I think we are seeing in Congress a response to what Bannon is urging and what the president is urging. Uh, I don't think it's in the interests of our investigation, uh, and I do think it's an effort to distract and place the focus elsewhere. I'm particularly disturbed, uh, Anderson, that the president and the White House uh, have violated justice policy by intervening with the Department of Justice in order to push forward this investigation of Hillary Clinton. Uh, it's yet another erosion of our system of checks and balances. I mean, that's pretty damning criticism that you believe uh, it was a phone call by Steve Bannon, pressure from Steve Bannon that, that House Republicans are responding to. Well, uh, you know, I think that Mr. Bannon may have been right when he said that he has more influence outside the building than he does inside the building. Uh, it's hard for me to escape the conclusion that uh, this sudden interest in the Uranium One uh, investigation uh, or transaction is unrelated to the president continually urging, hey, Republicans do something, literally all in caps, the same week that information leaks that people close to him may be under indictment. He's urging the Republicans to do something. Uh, but all along, he's been urging them not to investigate Russia, but to investigate Hillary Clinton and Ben in the same way. And I think we are seeing the very tangible results of that. Congressman Schiff, appreciate your time. Thank you.